I'm a slut. According to all of you, I'd be categorized as a slut because I flirt with a lot of boys, I've liked a lot of guys, and I'm not afraid to admit it. My friend Avery is categorized as a prude. She likes a lot of guys, she's flirted with a lot of guys, but not many people know. The only difference between me and her is I'm more open about my sexuality. And because of this, I'm categorized as something I'm not. When people hear the word sexuality, they think of being gay or bisexual. However, dictionary.com defines sexuality as capacity for showing sexual feelings. I'm in after school dance, varsity touch rugby, and I also take six IB classes. However, all of this just disappears and becomes irrelevant when you hear about me flirting with yet another guy. That one single action degrades me and puts me in a completely demoting category. There's this quote from The Breakfast Club that really captures the feeling behind subconscious social categorization. It goes like this. If you say you haven't, you're a prude. If you say you have, you're a slut. It's a trap. Just think. How many of you have been judged based on a single aspect of personality trait? For example, you. You can't be smart because you're an athlete and you don't take full IB. Or you. People think you're automatically a math prodigy because you're Asian. And you. You're Mormon, so it automatically means you have no social life and you don't participate in any romantic activity. Are these categories and these definitions what truly define us? Or is that society has placed us into a set category based on a single aspect of our lives? Humans are beautiful, multidimensional, complex creatures. There is more to us than just one word. Society has made us believe that we are one-dimensional and we can only be described as one thing. You're either a slut or a prude, an athlete or a nerd, for sports or for arts. But why can't we be both? I know it seems normal to categorize people. It's how our brain is wired and it's just how we think. But have you ever stopped to think about the effects it has on a person? Or even the effects it has on you? Three things happen when someone categorizes you. First, you lose your understanding of who you truly are. When people are constantly telling you you're athletic, you're gonna start to believe it's true. Then when the new school year comes around and the teacher says, describe yourself in one word, the only positive thing you can think of is athletic. You don't say you're pretty, or you're kind, or you're smart. You only say what your peers have told you. You shave yourself of your other dimensions in order to fit in. Secondly, you waste your time trying. You're so eager to fit in to that single category your peers have placed you in that you do three seasons worth of sports just to prove you are, in fact, athletic. And lastly, you give in. Not only have you become categorized, but you begin to categorize other people. You think you're a single adjective, and you think people can only be described as a single adjective. You give in to society's categorization, and this process begins again with someone new. As I mentioned before, our brain is wired to categorize people. There was a study done by US psychologist Jerome Berner. Berner's study led to the implex personality theory. According to his theory, when we meet someone, we absorb the most evident traits and make the most general assumption about that person's personality. It's a subconscious reflex. Now, when you're in the streets and you see this girl, she's wearing a short skirt, high heels, and a low cut shirt. She's walking with her friend, she has jeans, Converse, and a regular cut shirt. You would assume the girl in the short skirt and the high heels is more of an open or slutty girl and her friend in the jeans over there is old-fashioned or conservative. Take a look at these advertisements from a Swiss company called Tres de Femis. Notice how these adjectives determine who they are. If their clothing is too conservative, then they're old-fashioned or prude. But if it's too revealing, then they're a slut or a whore. What they wear determines who they are. Yet you don't know their name or their personality and you can't even see their faces. But yet, you have managed to categorize them based on a single aspect of their lives. You've decided who they are based on what they wear. We categorize people in everyday life, whether it's in the halls or in the streets. We make assumptions about people, and these assumptions aren't always right. In 2007, students at the University of Virginia did a 
research project on the revolving around subconscious social categorization. They placed each of their subjects on a bus with only two seats available. One seat next to an old woman and the other next to a bearded man. 98% of the subjects chose to sit next to the old woman, while the other 2% chose to stand. What the subjects didn't know was that the old woman was in fact a very skillful pickpocketer. And the bearded man was this extremely successful wildlife specialist. These subjects were later asked what they thought when they first saw the old woman and the bearded man. The majority of the subjects said the, said the old woman resembled a grandmother figure, very sweet and caring, while the bearded man looked like a homeless guy catching a ride. This experiment demonstrates one of the many deceptions of social categorization. Now, I'm not here to tell you that there's this magical way of fixing this and the world is going to become this beautiful and equal place because as we all know, it's not true. The truth is, there's not a simple way. We live in a world where media has complete control. I, for one, have zero knowledge about the political standings in America. But I can give you every detail about Justin Bieber's romance with Selena Gomez. Or I can give you the latest scoop on Harry Styles hooking up with one of his fans. My point is simple. The media has control over what we know. But we, we have control over what we say. We have control over what we choose to tell each other. We have control over what we choose to voice. We have control over our own words. Now I realize it's psychological to categorize people. We can't control or change that. And I'm not trying to tell you to change that. I'm just simply saying, we categorize people in our heads. But do we have to say everything we think? If we just think before we speak, we can change the way social categorization is set. Don't shave yourself of your dimensions. Show them off and be proud of them. Show your peers that you aren't just a single adjective and you don't fit into a single category. You are a multidimensional creature. You're a beautiful human. You're not just a single adjective. So next time someone tells you to describe yourself, I want you to give them 10, 20, 50 adjectives, because you are multidimensional and you cannot be categorized. Hi, my name is Vicky Terega, and I'm way more than just a slut. Thank you.